Hello, welcome to Day Off Gaming. I'm your host, Tellian, and we're doing a kind of a small playthrough. I've done about a total, grand total, an hour of this game uh, throughout the entire time I've owned it. And we're going to just kind of do more of a pre uh, a preview of the game as I do eventually want to put this on my channel as an actual playthrough, uh, which will probably be, be closer, obviously, to a uh, first-time playthrough. But if you want to join me, I am more than happy to have you come along and see just how poorly I can play this game. Uh, so let's look at this. Okay, so we need... This is an old campaign. I'm going to actually start with a new. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's what we got. We got Blessed. Heroes start each scenario with plus three blesses. Uh, healthy. Heroes have 50% more health. Let's see. Easy. So I'm assuming friendly... Okay, so friendly gives you all these. Easy just gives you that. Normal takes away everything. Um, and I would like to actually do normal. I really want to do on the normal fight. Because if we do the gameplay, I really want to do that. Uh, let's see. What is this area? Enhancement settings can be modified once campaign starts. Choose wise... Can not be modified. Okay. So we have temporary enhancements will affect individual mercenaries. It can be removed to regain 75% of their original cost. Costs can also be rebalanced. Enhancements cannot be sold. That's the original. And they say it's recommended. I'm assuming so we can kind of remodify the character. And not be so stuck with our choices. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and do normal with updated. And am I missing anything? Oh, inner guild name. Well, we're just gonna call this one day off. All right, let's see. House rules, original. Can't roll into null modifier with advantage. I'm assuming a lot of these were how it was originally set up. Uh, and these can be modified during the game. So we'll go ahead and just try what they have as recommended for right now. Interesting. Spawn monsters do not drop gold on death. And this one says spawn monsters drop gold on death. So that's kind of an interesting uh, setting. But we'll keep the basics. Uh, and we'll see. Let's see. Times 2 and times 0 modifiers. Oh, I see what it is. They've changed it to where it's plus 2 and minus 2. And we do not have the... Jaws of Lion. We only have the basics. Uh, I don't even think we have this. I'll have to see what we actually have. But we're just going to go straight in. Okay, press R to rotate your area effect spells to line them up with your enemies. Okay, we'll have to try to remember that. Welcome to the harsh lands of Gloomhaven, recruit. You think you have what it takes to become a mercenary out there on the edge of the world? We are paid to venture into the darkest forests of the region and to step into ancient crypts with the unmistakable stench of death and rotting flesh. Mmm, lovely places to earn a name for yourself. Be ready to face cutthroats, undead, fearsome tribes, and dreadful demons from other realms. You don't find yourself as a mercenary without knowing how to crack a few skulls, did you? <laughs> Alright, so let's take a look what we got here. Before going into the harrowing wilderness surrounding Gloomhaven, you'll need at least two mercenaries in your party. Brave, 
or greedy enough to seek out adventures in exchange for gold. All right. Once on your left, find the party panel. You here you'll see the basic. Uh, click on the first. Okay. Continue. All right. So we need a new mercenary. All right. We have the brute. Let's see. Good choice. Now remember, looks aren't everything. Mercs ability cards are what define their actions in battle. You can select the starting ability cards button to make sure this is the right mercenary for your party. Once you're sure, select okay. So of course the brute is probably seen as basically the main fighter. Yeah. Best frontline fighters, absorbing damage, protecting more fragile people. Uh, let's see, we have the Tinkerer. Craft all manner of gadgets and elixirs. I've been using these tools, Brave the Wild. Uh, one of the best starting classes to have in a larger party. We have abilities that, okay, so he's almost like a, he summons and can also take some heat away from, okay. So he has a range support, yeah, I was gonna say. Effective healer, that's always a good thing to have. Weaker in smaller teams, very fragile, has trouble in opening tight jars, okay. The scoundrel, looks like this is probably gonna be more your thief, backstabber. Yeah, high mobility, potential for high melee damage, can afflict enemies with poison. Little in the way effect little in the way of effects that assist yeah. Few defensive abilities and low health. We'll try and take all the gold. <laughs> nice. Um scoundrels are self serving and opt opt uh opportunistic. They believe that everything is theirs and will do anything to make sure it becomes so. She excels at high damage. Identifying lone targets, also gain bonus when from working, yeah, basically flanking. Uh, so we have Cragheart, okay, being incapable of mastering an element, their core shattered to mark them for life, okay. They have a wide range of abilities, reasonable help mean they can be used in defensive melee role as a ranged damage dealer or even a healer in a pinch. Prioritize using Earth Mana to get the most other abilities. Okay. Can place and interact obstacles. Okay, so they're versatile. Okay. Doesn't quite excel. Yeah. So they're almost almost like a jacket uh, all trades. Yeah, damage and support. Then of course you have your really like your mage, definitely. Can recover burn cards with reviving ether. Yeah, this is definitely uh, low health. Can die very fast, yeah. And this, of course, probably not the best because I'm more of a new player. I'll probably toy with this sometime, but let's see. They're great at dealing out damage at once, but deal due to the low health, they're pretty fragile. Yeah, pretty straightforward. And the Mind Thief, okay. So he looks like he might be almost like a controller, uh, the best way to explain it. A... Uh, yeah, a, uh, yeah, melee damage, let's see, terrifying through, yeah, psychic attacks, okay, allowing her to add effects to all of her melee attacks and later her range, also she also, additional can control, yeah, control enemies and summon minions, give access to a lot of different gameplay, be wary of low health, okay, <laughs> often confused for a giant rat, okay, so let's start with the brute, I do think we definitely want that, uh, let's see, Personal quests, so they actually have some personal quests, so we'll select the cat, uh, and let's see, don't really have a specific name, uh, as this is kind of our first uh, playthrough with these guys, um, he reminds me of Sothmatok uh, from my D&D world. It basically is almost uh, a mixture of a monstrous uh, creature. Uh, he was basically a kobold that got mutated uh, by one of my ancient gods, which became a giant killing machine. Uh, so that, I think that fits pretty well. And then we need to choose a quest. Okay, so reason for adventuring. Once the objective is complete, the merc will retire. Beware when mercs retire, they no longer will be playable characters. That's interesting. Okay. 
And then through farewell can often be bitter. Sometimes things uh, have to move on to give way to new horizons. Playing personal quest for time mercenaries is the primary route to unlocking new characters. Okay. So this, uh, let's see. Complete three crypt scenarios. Kill eight forest imps. Find, kill eight forest imps, then unlock the scenario Forgotten Grove. I think this will probably be just the easier one to do. Not really easier, but I think this is what we'll probably do is actually complete three crypt scenarios, then unlock the scenario Noxious Cellar. Okay, so let's go ahead and take that one. Okay. And then, yeah, we have to have a minimum of two, okay. <clears throat> New mercenary. We definitely, I think we'll want a, I have a feeling the first four characters, I'm going to get four characters. I'm thinking about taking the brute scoundrel and then I haven't decided if I'm going to try the mind thief or the tinkerer. Uh, do we have any range? We have a range support there. He's a melee damage also. I feel like if we have too many melee range, that can be a, just as bad. But if he can mind control, that's always a good I ability too. So let's... He's a fragile melee character. That's the thing that gets scary. Um, <laughs> not the greatest conversationalist. Let's see, how do I want to do this? Yeah, let's go ahead and try this, uh, scoundrel. Uh, what shall we call her? Uh, eh, we'll just keep it simple. Uh, let's see. Eh, we'll just go Nightblade. It's simple. It's straight. It's easy. Pretty accurate to what she does. All right. So we have to kill three oozes, three lurkers, and three spitting drakes. Or complete 15 different scenarios from the base game. Wow. Okay. That's... That's harsh. Um, yeah. So we'll just... As I said, this is just a playthrough, so we're just going to kind of just pick something quick. Okay, so we have everything we need. Okay, so before hanging out on your quest, you gear up. After all, it's the first time out in the open. You'll notice each mercenary has a modest stash of gold. It's encouraged to take that money over to the merchant shop and spend it on anything that might just keep you from dying. Okay. Uh, let's see. So that's the merchant? Okay. Let's see what we got. Okay, so yeah, you want to make sure you're clicking on the right person. Okay, so we have 30 gold and 30 gold. Uh, let's see. Are we able to see their inventory? Ah. Okay, so this is their equipment. Okay, so we need definitely items that will probably help. Okay, let's see. Either shield, piercing bow, poison dagger, warhammer. During your melee attack, add stun to the entire action. Wow, that takes like almost his entire gold. Boots of striding. Okay. So it looks like we have to really figure out how we want to do. Okay, so some of this, the next two times you are attacked, the van, uh, okay. So some of these actually give uh, negative modifiers maybe, like, okay, on the next two sources of damage from attack, you gain one shield, but it has add one negative. Hmm. Okay. Heater shield, what's that do? When damage by attacking one shield for the attack. Okay. Let's go ahead and get 
this for Sapatak. I feel as if we'll definitely want to go, we'll get, yeah, we'll go ahead and get uh, that. So he at least has some protection. Her, during your attack, gain advantage on the entire action. Wow. Uh, click invisibility, yeah. I definitely will want to get good armor. Poison dagger. Uh, we can't do it out on a single attack, unfortunately. Oh, there's some minor healing potions. I didn't even see those at the bottom. Let's see. What do we have on you? Okay. I feel like let's go ahead and just get them both basic armor right now. Okay. It may not be a good idea, but it's my thought right now. Just uh, is it known for its well-mannered folk and good Samaritans, and there is a lot to gain from its city. You can choose to partake in city encounters by clicking this button. It's encouraged to do this whenever you're in the city, as they often give good rewards. If you find ever find a quest that looks too hard, or one you've repeatedly failed to complete, the Temple of the Great Oak can grant you its blessing for a price, fair price. And you can do that by, okay, clicking on the temple. The first quest location is marked just north of Gloomhaven. You'll see its flag. I'm assuming that's what that is. Keep track of them. Use the quest log. Okay. You can embark upon the quest with up to four merchants, but the more merchants you bring, the more dangerous the quest will be. Once you set out for a quest, you won't be able to change the members of your party until you return to Gloomhaven. Okay. Um... As I said, this is just a tutorial, so I think we're going to just take these two and we'll see what we can find. And as I said, this is our first time really doing a big dive in, so we'll see how it's going. Hmm. All right, you decide to unwind that sleeping lion, but just as you start to relax, a bear of a man crashes into your table scattering your drinks across the floor. Towering over him is a massive Inox. What did you say about my horns? The Inox shouts. The man stands up and brushes shards of glass from his tunic. I said the sight of them makes me want to vomit. The Inox roars and charges headlong into the man, crashing through more tables in the process. At this, the entire tavern erupts into violence. After all, uh, when a man is deep into his drink, the last thing he wants to do is knock that drink over. Okay? Uh, do your best to stop to find this disrespectful establishment, or we can join the fray. These insults cannot go unanswered. Um, so we're kind of given the choice of how we want to do it. Um, oh yeah, we're going to join the f uh, fray. Nothing like busting some drunken skulls to lift one spirit. Turns out to be a great way to unwind. Unfortunately, the perpetrator at the sleeping line doesn't exactly see it that way, and he sullenly asks for compensation for damage you caused. <laughs> nice. Well, we have no money, so... Uh, so yeah, so we paid him basically. I have no idea how we paid him, but we paid him. Okay, so... That just kind of... Gave us some experience is what it looks like. And let's see. So is this where we need to go? Black Burrow? Where is Blackboro? Ah, so you click on that and it pulls it up. Okay, so we need to go through our ability cards and inventory. You can see the enemies you'll face hovering over them will reveal their stats. So we have definitely a ranged. Health five, okay. We have Bandit, he's a melee. And then we have another melee. Okay. So let's look at our cards. We have 10 equipped. Um, okay. So these are what we have equipped. And then these are what we can change out. So if we can change out and put one in. Okay. So that's a range, which could be useful, obviously. Uh, balance measure, where X is number of hexes you have moved, or as a 
you have two sets of cards here. You have, the top is your attack card and the bottom is movement. When you pick these, you pick, if I remember correctly, two cards. And then you decide which one is actually going to be for attack and then which one is going to be for movement. And if I remember correctly, I know the numbers tell you when you would move in the situation. Um, so let me think here. Do I want to change any of these? I feel like this wall of doom might be a good idea because with it just being two of us, we may need to have more. So what would we like to leaping would be nice, but let's see shield bash warding strength on the next six sources of damage from attacks targeting you gain one shield. Okay. I definitely want to be able to move. Attack six, move, push. This arm, let's go ahead and take that off and let's put Wall of Doom, I think. And then let's look at you. Swift Bow, that would be nice to have, obviously. Ooh, that's nice. Next time you suffer damage this round, suffer no damage instead. That could be really nice to have. Let's see. Special make sure heal self. Yeah, that's really good. Loot and move and attack. Okay. I think this might be a good hand just to keep on your next attack while invisible. Double the value of attack and gain or pull. Um, let's go ahead and get rid of that. Let's go ahead and grab the bow. All right, I think we have what we need. All right, so let's kill all enemies in the room. Everyone needs to eat. Whatever your reason for coming to Gloomhaven, out here on the edge of the world, that simple fact is never going to change. A mercenary can't fight on an empty stomach. So when Jexera, a Valrath woman wearing a red cloak and enough gold jewelry to keep you fed for a decade, approaches you in a sleeping lion and offers to pay you ten gold coins to track down a thief and retrieve some stolen goods, well, seems like as good an excuse as any to sober up and start paying off your tab. Yeah. This thief has taken some important documents, says the red-skinned merchant, her tail whipping about in agitation. I don't care what you do to him. Just bring back what is mine. All right. Based on Jack Sarah's description, it was easy enough to knock around a few alley thugs and get a location of the thief's hideout. You don't find yourself as a mercenary way out in Gloomhaven without knowing how to crack a few skulls. So your target is the Black Barrow. Sounds like a lovely place. Oh yeah. We head on out and let's see how well we do. We have an encounter. Okay. I do like it's sort of like a uh, encounter card, so it could be good or bad. Um, let's see. Knapsack, walking stick, side of the road catches your attention. You look around and see a man squatting in the bushes as well as... Oh, hello. Good timing, actually. You wouldn't mind grabbing me some leaves, would you? It seems I've made quite a mess over here. <laughs> Grab his stuff and run off while he's indisposed or get bring... Why do we have to bring him leaves? Uh, I, I almost feel like bringing him leaves is probably a bad idea, but we'll do it anyway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, glad it wasn't nothing bad. The hill is easy enough to find. A short journey past the new market gate, and you see it jutting out on the edge of the corpse wood, looking like a rat under a rug. Hmm. Moving closer, you see the mound is formed from a black earth, its small, overgrown entrance presents a worn set of stone stairs leading down into the darkness. As you descend, 
you gratefully notice light emanating from below. Unfortunately, the light is accompanied by the unmistakable stench of death. You contemplate what kind of thieves would make their camp in such a horrid place as you reach the bottom of the steps. Here, you find your answer. A rough group of cutthroats who don't seem to have taken very kindly to your sudden appearance. One in the back matches the description of your quarry. All right. All right, so now we have to choose... Okay, before each mercenary, you must choose one out of two battle goals. Battle goal is a secret objective that tries to complete inside the dungeon. Filling it uh, has no drawback, but successfully will earn a reward as shown. Okay. So... It looks like we can... Uh, we only have one that... Okay. Okay, so we can decide. Okay, allow none of your allies to become exhausted during the scenario. Have three or fewer totals in hand and discard. Hold on. Have three or fewer total cards in your hand and discard at the end of the scenario. Yeah, we'll try the exhausted one. And then is equal to two or less be the first to kill an enemy during the Scenario. Let's try that with an opener. Yeah, I do like that we can change this uh, difficulty if we do. So Take that's always a good thing. Of these unfortunates, your target says, backing out of the room. You can vaguely make out his silhouette as he retreats down a hallway and through a door to his left. Well, it's not every day we get people stupid enough to hand deliver their valuables to us, grins one of the larger bandits, unsheathing a rusty blade. We'll be killing you now. Okay. Jokes on them. If you had any valuables, you probably wouldn't be down here in the first place. That's kind of true. That is very true. Okay, and let's see, so we have all these cards. All right, let's see what we got here. I'm not sure how we can move, I'm assuming. Okay, yep. Uh, let's see, is there, we can use arrows, keys to move, or we can use kind of like the middle mouse button to kind of move, okay. Um, let's see, so for him, let's see, we have, Nine health, six health. He's a ranged, not ranged. He's melee, melee. Okay, so they're all melee. Let's see. So we want to be able to, we need to think about, do we want them to come at us? Kind of feel like, kind of do. That sweeping blow would be amazing if we could have them all come to us. Leaping cleaves, that's not bad. That would at least let us hit two. How far is he? One, two, three. Do we have one that lets us move three? Move three and push two. Um, so I think, um, let's see, no, hold on. Yeah, okay. And then I want that, let's see. Okay. Then let's see her. Single out, quick hands, so you can move and attack. Swift bow, range of four. One, two, three. So we could hit one of them. So let's try swift blow. Disarm, there's no traps around here, but let's see here.
Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. That works. Okay. Wow, he actually hit us. Okay, choose to take damage, burn one available card. Or, okay, we'll take the damage, it's fine. <laughs> All right. So, what we can do... I think what we're going to do here is we're going to move. I want to get back here. Uh, let's see. And we're going to poison him. And we're going to attack. too bad okay with him we're going to attack I'm hoping it hits these two hold on they're targets Okay, there. It hits both of them. Okay, confirm targets. Okay. And we're gonna push. Let's see, we're gonna skip movement, but we're gonna push. I think we're gonna push him over here. Okay. Let's think. We need to move a little bit quicker with some of these guys because otherwise we could get in trouble. So we're going to shield bash. We can heal, but we don't need to heal just yet. Uh, but we do need to kind of move here soon. So we should... That 87 would put us way down there. A sweeping attack is nice, but it's a plus two. Spare dagger, attack two. So we could technically hit twice here. Okay, I think that's what we're gonna, can we do that? Hold on, okay. Okay, so let's see. So we have those. Okay. Uh, backstab, that's not a bad thing to do. Backstab would be good. Okay, let's try that. Because we want to try and take some creatures out quick if we can. Which is good. Okay. So Scoundrel, what we're going to do is I think we're going to backstab this individual. Nice. And then can we take him out? Oh, we only did... Are you kidding me? Okay. 
The main reason I'm not trying to take him out right now is just because we do not want to... Um, let's stun... Let's see. Want a shield? He has three health, doesn't he? Okay. That's shield. And then let's take and hit him. Wow, that was bad. <laughs> Ouch. We'll take the damage. As I said, we're just kind of playing right now with this to see how we do. I'm pretty sure we could do much better, but we're just kind of trying this out right now. I want a sweeping blow here. And we need to kind of have a move. We really need to get moving in this dungeon. Poison attack. What do we have here? We have a three. Try those. All right, so we get to go her first, which is great. Okay, who is this guy? Probably the elite. Okay. We want to hit you. Nice. We can move. And, okay, get some money. Ouch. Uh, that hurts. Yeah, we'll burn quick hands. Okay, so we need to move. Yeah, let's convert move over here real quick. Nice. Okay. What we need to do really bad at this point is take him out or do some healing definitely so we need to heal do we have anything that we can really range attack on him move forward okay we need to do a trample and we'll try to push. Okay. Yeah, we'll just use these. Okay. On your next four attacks, targeting an enemy adjacent to none. Okay. Range three. Okay. And Attack X ability allows the character to attack an enemy within range with the base. Okay, so we don't get that. We can't do that, up, unfortunately. That was beautiful. Okay. All right. So, and... Um... 
Oh, he can't really do much because we've already took care of everything. Let's, uh, no. Go there. Open door. Alright, that may have been a mistake to go charging in, but we did. Okay. And we can't hit anybody, so we have to skip. Okay. As I said, right now we are learning this game. It's all we can do. It's a lot nastier than you think. I should have probably healed back in here. Burn one discarded card. Let's see, shield. I can heal. And plus one to all your attacks this round. Okay, so that doesn't help. Okay. Let's see. Let's go ahead and long rest. Uh, honestly, she needs a long rest too. Because we're both super hurt. Fine, we will burn. Wall of Doom. Probably should have done more of a... My gosh. Yeah, as I said, I put him in a bad spot, which was my fault. Okay. Oh, then I have to burn one. Okay. Let's go ahead and just rid of that. At least he has some health. Um, that heal would be really nice. Disarm one adjacent chat uh, trap. Loot flanking. Swift bow, I feel like we're just going to need to possibly... Let's get rid of throwing knives. You're just given so little uh, time to get through this. This is why it's such a challenge, this game. And then... I want to move forward if we can. Let's see, we're one, two, three, okay. We need to deal with these people that are near us. One, two, three. Do we have anything with the three move? We do. And then we'll do, oops. Uh, yeah, cancel. Shoot, I just did something. I don't think I meant to do that, but I did. Oh, I need the burn, I think, a card because I... Okay. Alright, we want to move here. Uh, we want to poison you. Okay. And then we want to attack you. That was nice. <laughs> that was a nice hit. Okay. Uh, let's see. We're going to push. Let's see. Can I push him back? Yes, I can push him into the trap, which is what my plan is. Yeah. 
Nice. Oh, uh, let's see. We don't want to completely trap ourselves. So let's confirm the movement here. If we had jump, we'd be able to jump over that. Burn two discarded cards. Wow, we're really hurting here. No, we'll, we'll burn those. I don't really want to, but... Burn them. Okay. One, two, three, four. Stun. Okay. So I want, if I can, I want to shield bash, definitely. Can I move? I can. So we'll try that. We have Swift Bow, which lets us attack at a range. Move five, and with Swift Bow, okay. All right. What we want to do, I want to move. Okay. Push. Confirm target. No. Uh, do I want to actually move him? I feel like that might be a mistake. No. Skip push. Because I want to stun him. Did he get stunned? Yeah. He did get stunned. Great. All right. Newt, after every hex you enter in this round. So if we go here, that's one, two. But it's not a range. Oh, man. Oops. Can I change that? Can I go back? Close. Undo. Okay. Range of four. One, two, three, four. And missing by one. Okay, let's just move here. And then we want to uh, skip movement and attack. Confirm target. Oh, are you kidding? All right. We'll use these last few. Burn one discarded card at random to recover all discarded cards. May we roll? Yeah, we'll just try and get her rested a little bit more. And then... Confirm him. Nice. And then we'll move him. He can't go around that or we don't want him to okay confirm movement skip movement okay all right and we have to burn another card ouch This is where it gets dangerous. We're almost there, but this last room, I don't know if we're going to survive. I really don't. Okay. With him, we're going to do a long rest because he needs to do a long rest. But See, we almost have no cards left for him. He's going to become exhausted, uh, which is really disappointed. But... Disarm a trap. And then. Yeah. OK. 
Okay. We need to disarm. I just want this trap disarmed. And then, yeah, we're gonna go here, open the door. Kicking through the door, you find yourself face to face with the reason these bandits chose this particular hole to nest in. Animate bones. Unholy abominations of necromantic power. Nothing more to do but lay them to rest, along with the remainder of this troublesome rabble. Okay, let's take a look in here. There is a chest over here, but I don't think we're going to have time to get to it. So what we're going to do is we want her out of range, or at least make it to where they cannot come in at us as easily. Uh, so we're going to skip movement there. Okay. Then we want to heal him. And yeah, I know we need to burn something, which is not what I want to do. But it's all we can do. He's going to die just out of exhaustion, which is really frustrating. Um, Because all we have are these two things for him. And with her, she's pretty much out too. This game is not easy. I'm pretty sure there's some people who are like, Oh, this is easy. Then, you know, you're just doing it wrong. And it's possible I am doing it wrong. But as I said, this is just a playthrough. I've never really done this too much before. But uh, let's see. If I move over here, or can I? One, two, three. I think we have to go around. We can't jump because we don't have the ability to jump. Um... Well, we only live once, so, you know, it is what it is. I don't see us succeeding on this mission, and that's fine. Okay. But shield, okay. Ow. <laughs> yeah, just die. <laughs> yeah, just die. I guess it's going to happen. There's nothing we can do. I'm so... I'm out of... Uh, attacks. And I don't know how much dangerous sir, this would be if I... Uh, had a full party of four. But say he's exhausted because he has nothing either. So, yeah. Okay, what now? Yeah, I know. We got defeated. But, yeah. So that's the game of Gloomhaven. It's not exactly easy. Um, I'm, as I said, I'm pretty sure there's people that are probably looking at me going, you're just doing it wrong. And as I said, it's very, very possible. Uh, the good part is if we fail, it looks like we do get to keep our people and we do get more gold. We can get more experience so we can try and go back and do it. So there is that, I think, um, helpfulness. So I'm going to release this actually today and I would like everyone's opinion of it. Uh, I'm pretty sure some of you may all have um, probably some opinions on what I can do to do better and that's perfectly fine. I will take some of the criticism because I know I've never been amazing at this game, but of course I've barely played it, so I'm still learning the ins and outs of it. So I will see you all next time. And if you do want this as a series, please let me know. Thank you.